Hello class, this is Dr. Ryan Rominger again. Uh, this week I am introducing a more theoretical discussion for our final week in our Transpersonal Approaches to Creative Expression class. I've chosen to put off the theoretical discussions uh, until this week for a particular reason. Uh, there was some call early on, particularly in the first couple weeks, for more in-depth theoretical uh, analysis or theoretical discussion and basis for what we were doing. Uh, but I've intentionally uh, focused on teaching this class in a particular way. Uh, let me read what I have posted in our week 9 uh, topic and discussion area to start. Now that we have experienced using the expressive arts ourselves, we have an experiential knowledge from which to discuss theory. That experience leads to alternative ways of understanding or alternative epistemologies, from the tacit to the kinesthetic, the transcendent to the imminent. From this place, we can expand further, including the head, the intellect, in order to discuss theory. Traditional ways of learning generally start in the head, and then with any luck, move into the body, and with even more luck, might expand outward into the soul or the spirit. What is it that we have been doing and learning in this class? Why are creativity, process-oriented expressive arts, and working with the images we make important or not? So that's the discussion uh, from that. That's the discussion paragraph that I want to start with, and from there I'm going to expand into a further discussion of theory. And I would invite you to do the same, considering your work over these prior eight weeks that you've been doing, considering the readings from Rogers, considering the readings from McNiff, and other articles that you've read along the way. Particularly in the past two weeks, you've been reading more articles uh, as you delve into your own article papers. So you can bring that into our cumulative, uh, cumulative discussion that we're having this week on theory to wrap up the course. So with that in mind, I would like to say that um, for me, the discussion of the theory behind CE starts with structures of psyche. There we could look at structures of psyche in two basic ways. Um, one way is that the structure of the psyche is that we, ha we have a conscious awareness and that's it, period. We only have what we're consciously aware of. And that is probably the least ascribed to theory um, within psychology. But some do hold that belief that it's only what we are aware of in the moment that makes any difference and that we don't really have these underlying um, unconscious or subconscious aspects of ourself. There's only the present moment awareness and the motivators uh, behind that. Um, then there is another way of looking at consci uh, our conscious awareness and that is that there are particular levels. So one says no levels, only what we're aware of right now. The other says, yes, we have multiple levels. Now, depending on what you come from, where you come from, those levels are described in different ways, and the relationship of our conscious awareness to those level levels are described in different ways. And you'll be getting more of this uh, information in your classes further on in the program um, that discuss more personality and personal growth, personal development, uh, and the psyche. But for here, for this conversation, uh, let's just keep it at, you know, we have con that conscious aspect, uh, belief, or we have levels of consciousness. And for the levels of consciousness, um, you're likely aware of me talking in this video right now. You may be watching the video, so you're visually aware of me talking to you. But you're likely not aware, or at least until I mention it, of your toes or of other somatic sensations, tension in your shoulders or your back. And you can go ahead and check your body right now. You'll suddenly become aware of different aspects. I'm suddenly aware of the um, coldness in my fingers, which I wasn't aware of before. And maybe you're not even really aware of your breathing patterns. Some people tend to be more aware than, than other people, but we can bring our conscious awareness to that somatic sensation. In fact, that's one of the aspects behind things like pranayama and yoga. 
You're also likely not aware of all your emotions in the moment and all motivating factors both internally and externally in your environment or subtle sense within the air. These have to do with uh, an area in psychology obviously called perception and you're, that's not, I'm sure that's not new to you. And specifically subtle perceptions and how the brain processes that information because we're, our brain can actually take in much more than we're aware of. Uh, but it also has to do with our own psyche and how we relate to the various information um, both from our sensations, our five senses, but also internally and thoughts and emotions that arise in our relationship with those various thoughts. Uh, such as uh, does something remind you of an early childhood experience and depending on whether that experience is pleasant or uh, unpleasant, difficult, then our response, our internal response might be very different. If it's unpleasant we might suppress or repress that memory coming forward whereas if it's a very pleasant experience we might allow it into our conscious awareness. Uh, or maybe of a particular instead of childhood experience, a spiritual experience you had. Um, if it's a um, spiritual experience that you've incorporated into your life and made meaning out of, then you're more likely to aware it into your conscious as a thought, an association with whatever that motivating uh, or trigger was in your environment or internally. If it's something that you haven't worked with a lot, you haven't integrated into your life, it was a spiritual experience that um, you haven't claimed or made per part of your personal narrative, then your internal reaction might be one of pushing it aside and pushing it away. So um, part of this latter element is, has to do with our relation to ver relationship to various information and that directly relates to what resides in the various levels of our consciousness. So consciousness is what we are aware of now and we could say that the subconscious is what we can generally be aware of in our day-to-day -day life and our unconscious is, is what we generally are not aware of by definition but we could potentially be aware of through dreams and looking at different archetypes or um, uh, constellations within the psyche and these are particularly coming from a Jungian perspective as you know, uh, transpersonal psychology hails back to or, or pulls from the uh, Jungian psychoanalytic tradition uh, as well as uh, Roberto Sagioli's psychosynthesis tradition, um, Maslow's uh, humanistic tradition um, as well, and then those are just three names, there are many. but. Um, Point being that the Jungian language around psyche is something very common to the transpersonal, which you're going to hear throughout your program. And so the, I'm going to stick with those three levels. Um, so going from there, most groups tend to ascribe to a levels of consciousness perspective. The psychoanalytic tradition, the humanistic, the transpersonal. I would even say um, generally the cognitive psychology, gestalt psychology, and I would uh, say that most clinical work is really focused on uh, working with the sub or unconscious in, in ways that um, have to deal with repressed or suppressed material or there's, there's lots of different types of defense mechanisms with those two I'm going to mention in this talk. Um, sometimes it's working with what's conscious but looking at it in a new way and shifting consciousness and more of a lateral movement rather than the uh, depth going into the sub or unconscious. But by and large most groups tend to subscribe uh, in my experience to some sort of uh, levels of consciousness perspective. And that brings us um, to the belief particularly around CE that working with this material within the subconscious or lateral uh, within the conscious or accessing the unconscious through dream work um, is important within the creative expression modality and that working with this material leads to the integration within the psyche and in turn leading towards our own personal growth and development.
So by working with these constellations, union constellations, or by uh, becoming more aware of our archetypes or our issues that we have, to put in more general terms, um, by becoming aware of that, we can bring conscious awareness to those aspects of ourself. Uh, talking from a psychosynthesis perspective, we can bring more conscious awareness to our subpersonalities, and we can integrate those into our psyche or concept of ourself, our personal self narrative. So, with that background, talking about levels of consciousness, let's shift to the general question how does CE work? Focusing on the conscious, uh, it helps us become more aware of our conscious thought and express those thoughts more completely. From a subconscious perspective, it's like uh, something akin to a flashlight in the darkness. We see that which we aren't always aware of, but which we can be aware of. So as we flash our flashlight around, we see things within our psyche and we say, oh yeah, okay, I remember that. And with again going back to uh, Sajeli's psychosynthesis, the goal here is within our subconscious or not our immediate consciousness, we are wanting to expand our conscious awareness and become a, become conscious of more of ourself. So we're expanding our conscious awareness. And then there's the unconscious. Um, we can track expressions and start to understand, like I was mentioning, our archetypes and our constellations or other items. It doesn't have to be that language, particularly Jungian language, um, but other items within us that we are inherently unaware of. Again, this is based on concepts like suppression and repression, that we have taken elements of ourself and pushed them into some aspect of our psyche, which we're calling, we're labeling the unconscious, um, and th therefore tend not to have uh, immediate access to those elements, and that they, those elements express themselves in uh, different ways, uh, through dreams, or um, through our own acting out, or through inflation, archetypal inflation, um, that we aren't aware of and it usually takes the help of someone else um, whether it's a therapist or a friend pointing out something to us um, that leads us to become more aware of those elements um, or it takes something like a failure of defense mechanisms that um, then stuff rushes into our psyche and we become overwhelmed and again we seek out the help of a therapist to work with it and reestablish our boundaries of our um, defense mechanisms. Okay, from there, let's move into, um, again, we're just still on the topic of how does CE work, but um, facilitating integration. And here I want to point out our article for this week. And that article is, um, here just, excuse me a moment while I have something going on with my computer. That article is by, by McMurray and Schwartz Meerman and it's called Integration and Working Through in Art Therapy. This article in particular comes from uh, more of an object relations uh, background. A couple of quotes I want to point out here is on the first page the authors say, in artistic expression the core of the creative process is the translation of the unconscious primitive impulses and fantasies into tangible forms in the present using art materials. The transformation of the intrapsychic ideations to external representations gives rise to the visual product that retains within it primitive themes identical to those originally directed towards the primary internalized self and object representations. The source of inspiration is in repressed primary impulses and fantasies that were directed towards significant figures in early life. And again, there's the connection back to more of a psychoanalytic tradition um, that early childhood has a uh, um, strong grip on establishing our psyche and, and how we relate to different elements within ourselves. Which um, I'm not sure I fully ascribe to, but um, this is coming. This is the position they're coming from. So fast forwarding here to. Um, uh, page 312 
The authors continue saying, Thus, in art therapy, the working through of previously warded off primitive impulses and fantasies, or the sectioning off of stuff, uh, takes place close to the unconscious. Again, an awareness of there being different levels of consciousness. They continue, Kernberg, 1980 and 1997, holds that the integration of primitive impulses and fantasies in the ego does not constitute the actual process of working through, but precedes it. The integration in the ego of the early internalized self and object representations is a prerequisite for the working through of previously warded off archaic contents. And on 3.13, the authors say, the translation of the previously warded off primitive impulses and fantasies into visual representations using art materials enables their re-internalization at a higher level of integration. And there they also uh, give a couple of citations, Covello and Robbins, 1980, and McMurray et al. in 2000. So here what the authors are really talking about in a variety of ways is that the uh, expression of the elements close to the unconscious or coming from the unconscious outward into expressive arts material, that process can be therapeutic, but it's also the process of then looking at that externalized material, which we now have some distance from. We can witness it in a new way because it's lost the grip of um, emotions associated with earlier primitive impulses and fantasies. And we can start to internalize those themes and those aspects of the self back into our psyche at a new level of consciousness and conscious awareness. And that is, the, is one type of integration process um, that these authors in particular are talking about. So, again, going back to well, what we're talking about, how does CE work? And we're talking about facilitation of integration. This is one type of facilitation of integration. We have some form of projection. We have the work, the imagery, the expression, and we have the incorporation back into the self-complex. From a psychosynthesis perspective, uh, integrate, integrating uh, various sub-personalities is likely more what you're going to talk about. Becoming aware of the um, sub-personality that we have within ourselves that, that we tend to act from in particular situations. And as we become aware of those different personalities within us, our conscious awareness expands and our subconscious expands, the unconscious um, gets smaller. So that is the integration into a um, more expanded self, complex, uh, self system. I would also say that there's uh, integration of, is uh, neurological integration. We have a neurological aspect of integration and I'm going to talk about that a little bit uh, in a minute. So the next piece uh, within this topic of how does CE work, or how does it, you know, how does it work, how does it help, is creative expression allows for the expression of the ineffable. It facilitates communication when words fail, and it also engages the non-language based and often non-logical based, non-logic based centers of the brain uh, in the communication process. So sometimes we have experiences that um, whether we're in therapy or we're talking to a friend or whatever, we come up to a language barrier and we can't quite describe that experience. That's what we mean by ineffable. But we, if we move into another mode of expression, music, dance, movement, our hands, um, our art uh, through uh, visual art or clay or collage, we're giving expression to something that we're not expressing in words or we're adding another layer of expression on top of words. So that's um, um, the expression of the ineffable. I believe this is a more whole brain process because it accesses not just the linguistic descriptive um, center of the brain but it also accesses the non-linguistic, the more uh, imaginal, the more image-based, the um, somatic even, uh, parts of the brain. And thus we're talking about a more whole brain or holistic integration process and expression. 
as a point of um, clarity, this is actually why I ask you to have your self-reflection papers uh, or posts. By doing self-reflection on your expressive arts process, you're taking that uh, kind of more right brain, imaginal, or somatic, um, emotional experience that you have, and you're moving that um, or expanding that into the linguistic area and you're bringing description, uh, descriptors of what happened. You're often bringing a logical um, time-based sequence. Um, this happened and then this happened and then this happened. Sometimes in the imaginal the uh, logical steps get lost. It's, it happens all at the same time in a sense. By doing both you're utilizing both parts of the brain you're activating more of your brain and engaging more of your brain in this process. Again, more whole brain process. So again, under uh, expression of the ineffable, point three is that we access the expressions which are ineffable. Um, those types of experiences are, you know, mystical and noetic experiences as well as nadir experiences, uh, and even some very traumatic experiences can be uh, ineffable. Words can only get you so far. And it allows for, again, for a more whole person expression of the self, if we're able to express those, those high, those peaks, as well as those depths, those lows, and everything in between, more whole person. Another point, uh, moving away from expression of the ineffable, uh, CE is also part of personal and social growth. And I don't mean social of the person, uh, the sociability, but society. So by engaging in expressive arts, we have the personal growth process, personal development. And we develop uh, developmental growth through integration and coming to know oneself better and mastery over oneself and one's life issues and one's self-narrative. But we also have the growth of groups in society. And so, um, expressive arts is often um, or can be tied to social action and arts is used quite often to raise awareness of various injustice in the world whether it's through video and documentaries or whether it's through um, art projects now uh, there's one particular art project of um, uh, in the Himalayas uh, people taking the, the trash that has been discarded as people are climbing mountains and bringing that trash together and making expressive art pieces out of that and selling those art pieces as a way to raise awareness um, of the uh, trash that's left behind on these types of expeditions in a very natural pristine area. Um, or you have uh, images that come out of war zones or um, uh, places with famine and those images and those narratives um, from the people the, the poetry really expresses um, the uh, horrors and the um, difficulties of a people and that makes the injustice personal for the witness it brings it to our self and touches the self and that's the whole point of using the expressive arts in a social justice fashion or social action oriented fashion. So moving on from CE as personal growth and social growth, um, CE also I believe activates the mirror neuron system or the MNS which is the F5 region of the brain. Um, it's a section of the brain that um, is kind of a recent up-and-coming um, discussion item in the past um, I don't know, say 10 years. Um, it's been associated with emotion and empathy. And uh, the, the, the story behind the um, F5 region of the brain goes back to research with monkeys, uh, primates, and the awareness that um, while the researchers were taking a break um, one researcher was eating peanuts and later they went back and they noticed these odd blips in the readouts because they didn't turn off the readouts uh, for the brains on the primates and they went uh, time sequentially back and found out they linked it up with the time that the researchers were cracking open peanuts and eating them and 
realized that the process of witnessing that event uh, was activating a part of the brain. Even though the primates weren't actually doing it themselves, they were experiencing it in some way as if they were doing it. And this was associated with the learning process. Since then, there have been research on uh, humans and emotion and the F5 uh, the MNS. Um, so there's you know debate and discussion around this. But um, if that holds true, that uh, expression of one person can be felt within another, an emo especially emotional expression, and activate that other person's brain who's not expressing the emotion as if that other person were actually feeling the emotion themselves then that applies to what we do in expressive arts particularly when we're engaging in emotional expressive arts and projecting that into media so as we're witnessing the media but more importantly when we're witnessing it firsthand in uh, groups or in therapy or working with individuals not only is the person expressing feeling that emotion but the person witnessing in some respect is also at a neurological level even expressing experiencing that emotion so there's some uh, MNS activation there um, is my belief I don't have any research to, to really link that and, and uh, support that within the expressive arts but I believe it um, could be done uh, not, in fact if anybody wants to do that research that'd be great um, and finally within this uh, section uh, I want to talk about the four values that we really utilize you may have noticed within each week I have a section called values and those four basic values are coming from our faculty that uh, we established four values that we feel are important um, within transpersonal education and those values are mindfulness compassion discernment and appreciation of differences I believe the expressive arts process actually speaks to all of those I believe that it, um, ha we have discernment around the topic that we're going to choose uh, before we even start before we when we were setting the intention to engage there's a discerning of what are the thoughts and emotions that are coming up and what is that potentially the meaning what what holds the weight for me right now there's mindfulness about how those emotions are being felt within the body there's mindfulness about what I'm choosing and how I'm engaging there's compassion around um, the self and the other compassion towards myself for what arises and compassion for the other as we witness and there's also an appreciation of differences the differences that I'm expressing within myself as they arise the multiplicity within but also the appreciation of differences within the group and again coming back to groups this is another important aspect about doing our work in groups the compassion for others the mindfulness of ourself and others the mindfulness of our own reactions to others so, and we learn about ourself as we're paying attention to those responses that arise within us as we witness other people's work and appreciating those differences that others bring to the group and the different ways of engaging creativity the different ways of expressing and the different uh, ways of connecting through those expressions so mindfulness compassion discernment appreciation of differences well with that um, that's the whirlwind tour there's lots of other aspects about expressive arts that I haven't been able to cover. Um, you could study this throughout your five years here at uh, Sophia University and still be uh, gleaning more information. And, and if you choose to do that, that's great. And if not, that's fine too. So let's go back to this discussion for this week nine. Uh, what is it that we have been doing and learning? why our creativity process oriented expressive arts and work with images we create important when is it appropriate and important and I would add what theoretical elements might I um, have skipped over that you wish to bring to this discussion maybe there's something you're sitting with that I didn't mention that might be important to say and I would uh, invite and encourage that as well so let's uh, engage in this theoretical discussion this week 
If you have questions, please post those questions. Uh, comments are welcome, and I look forward to seeing you online. Take care and have a good day.